Well, biotech stocks got a boost this week, at least collectively, as the world's biggest cancer conference wrapped up in Chicago. Targeted therapies and medicines that help turn the immune system on tumors were among the highlights of that conference. And for more insight now, we're joined by Dr. Drew Pardell. He's director of the Bloomberg Kimmel Cancer Institute for Cancer Immunotherapy, and Astika Gunawardna. He's the senior biotech analyst for Bloomberg Intelligence. Astika, turn Hello, it over Julie. to you. Thank you. Drew, we saw some very interesting uh, data at the conference. I was wondering if you could tell us, what, it, from a clinical standpoint, what were the biggest winners and losers? So I think that the biggest winners were patients. Mm -hmm. There was so much uh, going on. There were um, at least 50 new targets, molecules that regulate immune responses, that there are now drugs for which uh, early clinical data uh, was being presented. There was also follow-up data that validates now that patients who get responses to immunotherapy in contrast to the way it used to be with chemotherapy are having years and years of uh, remission. Um, we're even beginning to think about using uh, the C word, C for cure. Mm -hmm. um, because of the length of remissions that we're seeing in those patients. Um, and also, we're seeing that these immunotherapies are moving much, much earlier in the course of the cancer, uh, including even before surgery. And um, in a number of cases, that's proving to make a very big difference because patients now don't have their immune systems beat up by many rounds of chemotherapy. So these are some of the things that I think uh, certainly have me very excited. And Estig, I wouldn't ask the doctor about stock winners and losers, but I'm curious if there were companies that stood out to you from the ASCO results. Yeah, so um, coming out of ASCO, ASCO Monday, as we call it, Julie, Nectar was down considerably, uh, Blueprint Medicine was down considerably. Um, this this is not necessarily that the data was that bad. Uh, it's more about misplaced expectations. Mm. So Nectar going into ASCO had a very big run up, was already trading pretty high. Um, and, you know, reality checked in and, and that uh, um, euphoria that be uh, behind that got, uh, got a sense check and that's what had uh, brought it crashing down. Uh, so speaking of expectations, I'm curious, uh, you know, immunotherapy is something that's been talked about now for what, 10, 20 years as being the sort of next wave in cancer treatment. Has it lived up to that? And, or do you think that people got sort of too, their hopes too high about how quickly we were gonna see a big change? Immunotherapy has been predicted for more than, for longer than that, for right. probably 30 or 40 years. Uh, the real transition happened uh, in between 2010 and 2012, when these so-called checkpoint inhibitors, these are antibodies that essentially disable the breaks on the immune system that, that tumors use to protect themselves from immune elimination. Um, CTLA-4 and the big one was, was um, PD-1. Um, they all of a sudden started um, showing very significant responses in many different cancer types, melanoma, kidney cancer, lung cancer, and now there are approvals in nine or 10 different cancer types. So from 2010, 2012 to now, if you look at the market, if you look at the use of these um, agents, it's, it's really just gone exponential. That period of time, six, seven, eight years, is a heartbeat um, for what we used to be thinking of, of progress in cancer therapy. So this has accelerated really quickly. Um, I think there's no question that immunotherapy is now one of the pillars of cancer treatment. Um, but we have a long way to go, which is why the 50 new drugs that were rolled out at ASCO, even though the data was early, um, has me very excited about the future. 